Welcome back to Final Fantasy XII's post-game, and last time I only just realised that the music that plays in here is the same music that plays when you're infiltrating the palace and dodging the guards at the very start of the story. But we are at the clan hall because now it is finally time to accept the Ancient Man of Mystery Hunt. Stolen swords, huh? Well, this guy better not steal our Masamune. And the Excalibur we just caught. Oh, uh, we just got. Actually, now's kind of the perfect time to get it since we've got a whole lot of legendary swords. Challenge a single combat for an ancient man of mystery, but lost. Hmm, I wonder who that was. Totally wasn't you or anything. Ancient Man of Mystery must be challenged on a bridge. Interesting. And quick on his feet. So we're going to be going to the Lusu Mines, and off camera I did buy more remedies. I believe we do have a warp straight into the Lusu Mines, though I think it's a little further in than we need to go, but anyway. Where is it? Yeah, here we go. Yeah, this is actually quite late in our list of warps, which uh, I guess implies we found it a little bit later, and I just see that guy turning towards the camera, and I just immediately think in my head, Hey, Buckethead! <laughs> yeah, this is probably further in. Yes, it is. Uh, or is it? Or is that the bridge? I know there are multiple bridges here. There's that span... Yeah, there's a few places it could potentially be, or that one. So just in case it's right in front of us, I'm going to go ahead and save here. Unless they tell you which bridge it is. Also, yes, I have filled up all the save slots finally, so I don't want to get rid of that one. <laughs> ah yes, back when we were a simple moppet. You can actually get a good in indicator of where we were in the game based on these save files, I, I like that and see all the guests we had with us. Ah, oh, I don't want to, like, destroy my historical save files. Yeah, I'm gonna actually just go ahead and, uh, save over files that I know have already recorded successfully. So, before you face the Ancient Man of Mystery, I would recommend you, um, like, so basically there are, there are multiple parts of this hunt, and the first one is pretty doable even before beating the game. Yeah, here we go. Battle on the Big Bridge! Yes, I wonder who the Ancient Man of Mystery is. Uh, yeah, on oh, a bridge somewhere in the Lusu Mine, so uh, no specifics. But I would recommend having Gambits set to Steal from nearest visible foe. Have that available at all times. Because this is a fight that you definitely want to steal things from. It's only a couple of phases of the fight that require stealing, though. And you know what, for this, let's have both of you take Excalibur. Oh, yep, this is the bridge. So when I first played this, my reaction was, who is this guy and why does he have full voice acting? And why does he have his own unique boss theme and why is it so awesome? This is the Ancient Man of Mystery, Gilgamesh, from Final Fantasy V and a recurring dimensional traveler in the series. We are kind of over level for this, but um... Things will change eventually. Fools, you face the mightier swordsman in all evil east. You face me, Gilgamesh! 
Long have I sought the blade of legend. Scoured have I the furthest marches, east and west. And now my search brings me here, to you. New weapons are forfeit to me. I just wanted to let that part of the song play out because it's great. I'll explain a little more about Gilgamesh and his history with the series uh, eventually, but yeah, that's a replica of Cloud's Buster Sword he's using right now. <laughs> this guy is a walking reference. So every time he says more dialogue, the phase will switch, and it's the last two phases that are the ones that I actually want to steal from. The first few only get you potions. Okay, I'm gonna start doing my steel gambits now. There we go, okay, we got it. We got the Genji shield. Now I can switch off of those gambits. You have a 30% chance of stealing it, but he has no other steals, so, like, there's, like... If you keep stealing, you'll eventually get it, is what I'm trying to say. This, I believe, is the only way to get the Genji shield in the game. And the last phase has the final uh, uh, item that we need to steal. Hmm, I fought worse. And what he's using now is a replica of the the Tuna Soul from this game, which is a weapon that um you oh yes, let's use license points in the middle of this fight. It's a weapon that you need to go through ridiculous lengths to obtain. I think you have to beat most of the super bosses to get it. Um, it's a it's an item from the bazaar. I think in Zodiac you can also steal it from trial mode. But in this state, okay, he's immune to everything. Ultimate Illusion just is just uh, another way of saying Final Fantasy, by the way. It's uh, it's another one of those jokes. Oh, okay, so uh, Greater Barrier prevents you from being stolen from. That's interesting. Um, at this point, I guess we're just going to hang back and just heal until his Greater Barrier wears off. I guess we have to hear more of this cool music. But the reason why I'm doing the Steel Gambit here... is because in this phase you get the Genji Gloves from him, and Genji Gloves are something that you really, really, really want to make sure you steal, because they are a pretty good accessory. Okay, there we go, Paling's gone. And we already got the Genji Gloves, nice stealing people. Okay, so let's switch back to our uh, original set of Gambits. Yeah, this might look easy, but um, yeah, this is only Gilgamesh round one. It's round two that I'm a lot more worried about. Oh, he also, I believe, has, yeah, Protect Shell, uh, a whole lot of things, so let's go ahead and dispel that. And actually, maybe things are not uh, quite so easy right now. Let's go ahead and again dispel those. Yeah, usually when bosses use something like Greater Barrier, they, uh, they gain, like, at least Protect and Shell may also get uh, a passive Reduce All Damage argument. I hope that's not Bacchus' wine Vaughn's drinking there. So yeah, we're celebrating, but it's a little too early for that. Oh, well, we're probably more celebrating the fact that we got the Genji Gloves and the Genji Shield. Which I think Vaughn, Barsh, and Balthier should be able to use. Because it's in both Knight and Bushi's license boards. 
In the original version, of course, everyone could use it. So, I first want to just check out what the Genji Shield does. Uh, evade 30, element none. I don't know if it has any particular special properties to it, because that seems kind of bad. I... It probably does have special properties, I'll have to look that up, but uh, the Genji Gloves are the real prize here. Improves chance of scoring multiple hits. That combined with the Masamune, which already has a high multi-attack rate, that gets pretty fun. Your chances of, uh, like, of doing combo attacks increases the lower on HP you are. Combo attacks, as I said in an earlier part of this, were a lot more valuable in the original version of the game than in Zodiac, because that one had a damage cap of 9,999. This one does not. But yes, our mark got away, and if we look in the clan primer at the hunt section... You must find out where he hides and confront him once again! Yeah, things are not over with Gilgamesh, and while the first battle, uh, as I think I was saying earlier, is definitely doable with, uh, like, a normal, like, level 50s endgame tier party, the second Gilgamesh fight is very much post-game worthy. In fact, at this point, this post-game run has officially become blind. Because, in my first playthrough, I did the first Gilgamesh battle, I never beat Gilgamesh the second time. I did it mostly for the Genji Gloves, because I knew how good those were. In the original as well, you only got the Masamune after you beat Gilgamesh. But in this version, you can get the Masamune early, because they changed it to a chest in the room where Gilgamesh Round 2 is fought. So, I went there earlier in the game and grabbed that, uh, well, early. I'm gonna go ahead and switch Bolfia back to a gun, just because I want long range. The other reason I left this to post-game is because, well, yeah, the, um, the harder part of the Lusu Mines is where Gilgamesh is, and the enemies in there, well, they kind of wrecked me my first time, uh, going through there, in order to <clears throat> obtain the Masamune early, along with, uh, some other things. I think this is, that's where we got Arturus, as well as, I think, another, uh, pretty good piece of armor in there. But while I'm on my way to the second encounter with Gilgamesh, I suppose I can talk about, um... Yeah, now I'm not, of course, the greatest authority to, uh, speak on Gilgamesh because... Uh, because... Oh, that's how we get down there. Because I've never played Final Fantasy V, which was the game where he debuted. Gilgamesh was a minor villain in Final Fantasy V, sort of a, a comic relief villain. Like, like while Sephiroth is like Final Fantasy's most iconic, like you know, full-on actual big bad, Gilgamesh is probably its most iconic comic relief villain. Even though Final Fantasy V was never released uh, in the West for a while, I think until the GBA remake, which is this is kind of uh, I would say kind of weird, but like the early Final Fantasy games had a very weird release schedule. Yeah, they, they kind of, it was at a time when JRPGs hadn't really caught on and people just thought that, you know, oh hey, yeah, no one really wants to play JRPGs and even less people in Europe want to play JRPGs, so we're not going to give them Final Fantasy VI. Um, anyway. I think not even any Final Fantasy until seven came out in Europe and Australia. And if I remember, I, I think Vaughn just Libred. I remember this place being full of traps at some point. Oh, there we go, there's a bunch of traps. But anyway, he was a major character in Final Fantasy V, and now he wanders the multiverse as um, a recurring boss. He's almost never a required boss in a later game, uh, but yeah, he is uh, yeah, considered a multiversal wanderer. Who stepped on that trap? That really sucks. And uh, he fights in search of weapons and in search of worthy opponents, even though he himself is usually not a worthy opponent because, yeah, he... <laughs> Uh, he kind of thinks he's stronger than he actually is. <laughs> but, uh, the version of him in this game is actually pretty powerful. The one that we're about to face, which again, I, I do vaguely know that he, um, uses, like, the, the, like, skills like level 3 sleep and level 4 disable, so how close is Bolthea to level 61? Because 61 is actually, you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and give Bolthea... 
an embroidered tippet just so he gets level 61 faster, because 61 is actually a perfect level to fight Gilgamesh at, because it is not divisible by 3 and it's an odd number, which means that he will actually try and use his level-based spells, and they'll just all fail. Because yes, he kind of takes after Zalera using the whole death by math thing. Except the thing, the thing is that um, a lot of those like level based, like level divisible uh, spells all actually. Um... Now let me just, I just wonder about something. Is oil an area effect? Looks like it is. I'm gonna try this and see if this makes Franz Ardor do more. It's a lot of damage, but I kind of feel like she was probably still one showing them anyway. There's a save crystal at the end of this area. But hopefully we are ready to take this on at this point. But yeah, like, th th those, like, level divisible based spells, all of them were, um... Uh, I know that a lot of them were in Final Fantasy V, because a lot of speedruns and forge of fiestas rely on them. I know there was, like, one called, like, Level Something Old that divides the enemy's level by a certain thing and thus makes them more susceptible to the other math-based skills. And, um, yeah, again, I've, I've heard that that can be quite fun in uh, certain challenge runs. But yeah, this was actually my first exposure to Gilgamesh, so, like, like, like I was saying during the actual fights, my first reaction was like, why the heck does this guy have voice acting and his own boss theme? And holy crap, this boss theme is really cool. Now I get a very strong- actually, no, let's switch back over to Excalibur. Because these things here are weak to holy. Nice, like, 10,000 damage there. Yeah, I'm- out of all of the- like, okay, so- Another thing about Gilgamesh is the music that plays during his fight, Battle on the Big Bridge. Uh, okay, um, speaking of which, now that you three are level 61, I'm gonna actually take you out of the party. And that means that Balthier has to no longer use Excalibur. Because I want to keep their levels so that, you know, they, they go in at the right level, you know, divisible by the right numbers. But yeah, that music, Battle on the Big Bridge, is actually not originally like uh like despite how iconic that of a song is for that song is for Gilgamesh now, that song was actually oh interesting they considered undead, that makes sense. So yeah, Ash is gonna completely wreck these things with Curaja. But that song was not actually Gilgam like a, a theme that was originally his alone. It is called Battle on the Big Bridge because it plays during a story event where you are fighting a battle on a big bridge. Gilgamesh just happened to be one of the fights on said big bridge. Uh, but um, despite that, the song was just so iconic and it became so associated with him that um, in every later appearance, it became Gilgamesh's battle theme. And the version in this game... This is actually my favourite version of Battle on the Big Bridge, uh, in the series. I haven't, like, admittedly I haven't heard many of them. Something tells me, like, I vaguely recall hearing uh, a version of it that's done in a very traditional Japanese style. Like that version of King Dedede's theme that was in Smash 4. I, although I could just be thinking about that, I'm not sure, but, like, someone tell me if they recall this too. Like, I seem to remember there was at least one version of Battle on the Big Bridge that did have, like, a traditional Japanese sound to it. I know that, um, that, like, there was a fight with Gilgamesh in Final Fantasy XV that was, like, one of the few times where he's not treated as comic relief and he's just... Like, honestly, that version treated him more like Yojimbo than Gilgamesh. It kind of treated him as this legendary undead samurai who, um, wasn't really even, like, a comic relief character at all. I think he's the, the end boss of, um, Gladio's special DLC episode. I didn't get any of that game's DLC episodes. In fact, maybe they actually came with my copy of the game. Uh, but, um, yeah, I didn't play any of them. Oh boy, FF15's DLC. Um, it's also kind of hilarious how much easier this area is than the first one we went through. Um, but yeah, uh, like I heard that they were supposed to build up to one big epic final DLC where Bahamut would have been revealed to have been the true villain behind everything and everyone would have turned against him. But um, sadly it did not turn out.
FF15's uh, DLC apparently didn't do all that well, and there was a lot of other troubled developments with that game. It's just, it's kind of a shame. And then, like, some people say that, like, somehow Yozora in Kingdom Hearts 3 is like Tetsuya Nomura's attempt to actually make the Final Fantasy 15 or Versus 13, as it was originally called, that he always wanted to make. Yeah, it's, it's kind of confusing. Um, like, I played 15, I enjoyed it, but um, it's definitely not my favourite out of the games I played. It's one of the few open world games that I've actually, like, kind of enjoyed, but um, it's very easy to get absurdly overleveled in that game. Like, it is completely ridiculous just how easy it is to overlevel yourself, like, via, like, the, the hotel multiplier for the really expensive hotels that, you know, are easy to use because uh, you get money pretty easily in those games. Probably gonna, uh, if I didn't have these things entries in the bestiary before, like expanded entries I mean, I'm probably gonna get them now. Dizma. Um, I assume that you're a rare game since you spawn with a whole bunch of status sailments. Okay then. You don't have some kind of like instant death aura effect or something. Yeah, you have a heck of a lot of HP, okay then. Um, Pinello, please dispel that. Uh oh, it's going for them now. I mean, it's certainly beatable, I think, at our levels. I feel like Ultima would do a pretty good job against it too. Shining Ray, that doesn't sound good. <laughs> Definitely not good! Uh, right then. I don't want to have to... I, I mean, I don't... I think these people are going to level up from that. Well, Thea no longer has the... Oh, he still has the embroidered tippet. Let's just switch that up. I mean, I, I, I like reserve... Oh, actually, I think all of that mist gauges get recovered when you use a save point. I'm going to try this. I don't know if this is going to work. Because Pinello could just straight up die. I will probably put on screen right now uh, if this... um. Honestly, you were just going to preemptively spam healing on yourself while Ultima hopefully finishes this thing. Yes, go for Ultima, thank you. Do I have Decoy? I do, but Ultima has a natural reflect, I think, so I would have to equip... Um, yeah, I'd have to equip um, the and like the Chias Reflect accessory in order to be able to actually cast Decoy on her. I mean, it's probably a decent idea. Okay, she actually did get Bubble on her. Oh wait, I already have the Ignore Reflect equipped, don't I? Yeah, I do. <laughs> so I could have decoyed her all along, but... Okay, good, it's down. A cursed trophy. Okay, that's a hunt club uh, thing. That explains why it wasn't there before. As in, like, when I last went through this area. I really don't want to waste Ultima. Where's someone else we can tr uh, just have Ultima go ham on? Oh, Redemption has pretty long range on it. And you barely survived. Blood, Dark, and Bones sell for quite a lot. I got a lot of those during the, the other skeleton grind that I did. Okay, yeah, sorry Ultima, but I'm gonna have to, I think, dismiss you now-ish. Uh, well, let's take out Dark Lord in. Watch out for that trap there. I think Ultima has innate float, so she should avoid that. I mean, you know, you'd think she'd have float looking at her, but um, it's not always that simple. And, um... Sorry, Ultima! It always sucks in, like, to be a summon in a Final Fantasy game when you, when you just get manually dismissed. <laughs> yeah, like, that feeling must really, um... <laughs> That must be the most embarrassing thing when you're a summon. 